Hi, my name is James Israelson, and you're watching Serial 5 Part 3, the audio commentary. You're so lucky. Um, let's see. I have to talk to you about some certain stuff, and other stuff I need to leave out because it's not very important. Let's see, so this is five, Serial 5 Part 3, Serial 5 Part 1. It was made in 2011, this is 2018, so seven years ago. Uh, as, as you can tell, Serial 5 Part 2 doesn't exist. So this is a sequel to a movie that doesn't exist. Um, so you might be thinking that's a strange choice, but honestly, it's a choice I made because I didn't want to make Serial 5 Part 2 because I wanted to make this one more. So I skipped Part 2 for now, and I made this one. Now, it's taken me two years to make this movie, mostly because I was procrastinating. Uh, this opening shot um, takes place directly after Serial 5 Part 2 that doesn't exist. Um, in that movie, at the end, there is these spaceships, they fly around, they blow stuff up, we don't know what they are, who are flying them. So, yeah, this, this is where that movie takes place, uh, directly after 5 Part 2. So, this is one of the ships that is flying around, blowing stuff up at the end of 5 Part 2, and right now, we d discover with Guy who's actually flying these ships. And surprise, surprise. It's a cereal box soldier guy from Serial 3 and Serial 4. Um, they work for the humanoid cereal box. And that's why I made this movie, because I was really looking forward to bringing back the humanoid cereal box. So much so that I skipped part 2. Um, yeah, so this whole movie was written, designed around the idea of having basically a story that follows Guy with the red hat. Um, on one last adventure through the surreal whatever, wasteland or whatever this is, desert thing. And, um, and I, w I wrote this down because I kept forgetting what it's called, but this Serial 5 Part 3 is actually a spiritual successor to Serial 3, because Serial 3 is my favorite of the movies. So this is kind of a sequel to Serial 3 in the fact that it brings back the Serial Soldiers, as well as the Humanoid Serial Box, as well as the robot going on an adventure with Guy. Um, so there's a lot of elements from Serial 3 in this movie, uh, to the point that I copy lines, I copy exact movements, I copy all this stuff um, that I don't think anyone <laughs> at all will pick up on except for me, but that's okay because I really enjoyed going back and uh, looking at my favorite serial movie and copying it. Um, this foreground with the lines and stuff, that cost eight dollars. So this is the first surreal movie that has a budget. Uh, yep. Um, this shot was strange, it's kind of out of place, I didn't really know. But it, it just reminded me of how terrible I used to make surreal movies, and I figured, hey, why not? Surreal's a pretty terrible franchise. <laughs> whatever, you can put whatever you want in it. It doesn't make sense, but doesn't need to. Um, yeah, so this guy, he gets his head shot off by the robot, and this is, I made this scene to look exactly like the scene from Surreal 3 with the robot in the kitchen, if you watch that movie. Um, yeah, so this movie's kind of violent. Um, wait, hold on. This scene here took three hours to render, from the rub from the building going down to this scene here. It took three hours to render, and then the first time I did it, uh, I realized there was a mistake in it, so I had to delete it and start over and render it out another three hours, um, right at three hours back to back. So that was fun. Um, so now we're underground, and this is the uh, old serial base. Um, this movie, I, I tried to pay attention to, to where they were in rooms. I tried to pay attention to what was behind them so I could match it up in other shots. Uh, which is kind of a first for me, because usually I just throw it, stuff around wherever, wherever I want. Um, this is a cool thing. So, okay, so this gun is from Serial 3. Um, and anything you see from Serial 3, whether it be the gun, or even the half the guy's robot's face in, in this shot, in all the shots actually, whatever, um, I had to trace everything from Serial 3. 
because I don't have the project files anymore. So um, anything you see from Serial 3, I had to s I had to actually pause the movie while I was watching it and make a screen cap and trace it in Flash and painstakingly uh, get the colors for right and whatever. But it was a pain in the butt, but I got everything everything done. That orb he's holding. Anytime I selected it in Flash, it would crash the program. So that was fun. <laughs> that was a fun thing to work around. Um, I try to make over over the shoulder shots in these scenes a little more I don't know dramatic, whatever. Because um, I was getting really sick of the idea that these characters are just so flat and cardboard and don't do anything. Um, but whatever, it's my own fault. Can't really blame anyone else. I'm the only one doing anything in this movie anyway. Um, so yeah, so I was working on this scene with the robot and the guy for so long that I was like, you know what, I need to give, I need to give robot, like, more, fi like here, like more facial expressions, more, something to do more with his face. So I, I redrew his body in that scene and I gave him more like an, like an eye twitch type of look. <coughs> A lot of these cool camera movements I did inside After Effects, I couldn't do these kind of cool stuff in Flash. Um, so this here, like, his eyes, like, kind of closing in. Because I was just like, getting so sick of looking at his boring face. Um, and then his hand gets blown off. Yeah, so I used to show these, uh, movies to my church. Like, to the youth group or whatever. But I don't do that anymore, so I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna just make it bloody and whatever. Like, I wanted to have the robot just shoot these guys' heads off and stuff, but I didn't get that far. Um, so yeah, this is the first slow motion in surreal history, I think. Uh, this bullet was on green screen, and I I made the room and rotated it around the bullet, so it looks really cool. Uh, this is really cool. This is um, a piano a piano person did this. So I I had the the music for the for the robot's theme, which is that dun da 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 dun da 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 da, and I gave that to a person online, and I said, hey, can you make a slow sad version of this on the piano? while someone's dying. And they're like, yeah, of course. You have to pay me. Whatever. So I paid them, like, $10. Or and they they did it, and it turned out pretty good. Um, yeah, so, actually, I also got voice actors, you probably noticed, which is the first in surreal history. And I think it, it added a pretty cool element to the story, and to the animation. Um, this scene, and this scene. Um, I copied directly from Surreal 3. I would, like, play that scene over and over again so I can animate it perfectly <laughs> to to mimic exactly what it looks like in Surreal 3. Uh, and this is a really cool explosion in After Effects, and this is an After Effects, and that's an After Effects, and everything's an After Effects. After Effects, After Effects, After Effects. Um, so yeah. Um, as you probably noticed, I've talked about this before, Everything is underground. They always end up underground, and this is no exception. Everyone's underground all the time and nice stuff. It's, it's just what happens. I like how everything's on fire. Like it's a, a raging inferno. Um, yeah. So this is one of the first scenes from this point to the end of the movie that I made first in this movie. If that makes any sense. Um, because I was so excited to do the humanoid cereal box that I skipped everything and I jumped straight to this almost. Um, and I, yeah, this is one of the first things I did. And you can, you can ask me why I like this guy so much. I don't know why I was so excited to bring him back, but I, I am because probably, probably because Surreal 3 is my favorite one. Um, he's the villain from it, so. I was wondering, like, because they couldn't leave him in the dust. And I was wondering, like, what was he doing this whole time? Because um, he didn't die or anything in, in Serial 3, so I brought him back. And that's some questions of my my own, I guess. And, um... So, yeah, his his whole thing is that... Oh, guy is Dr. Stone's, Stone's favorite. The Serial Box wants to be Dr. Stone's favorite. So I was thinking, you know, this is coming from me, though. I'm the one writing this. Do I have, like, some weird you know, like, subconscious th something coming out, like, parental issues that I have, like, it's kind of, it's kind of freaking me out, so I was getting really, like, in-depth, like, thinking about psychology and whatever, like, what's going on here, but whatever, I don't think I'm crazy, I might be, it might be coming through surreal, I don't know, I just don't know, um, 
but yeah, this, the city be behind him right here in this shot is just a screen cap from Serial 3. Yeah, sorry to burst all your bubbles, but yep. Yep, yep, yep. Um, I don't know, anytime you add rain to a scene, it makes it look infinitely better. Um, okay, so this shot, pulling back, and all these, all these elements here I got from from the project files from Surreal 4, because I still have those project files. Um, because I like the idea of going back in time and revisiting old old Surreal movies. But I figured if, if I'm going to go back and talk about Surreal 4, I have to show Surreal 4. And later on you'll see that I actually grabbed a screen thing from Surreal 3, uh, the pixelated clouds background. Because I want people to know we're back in those movies, not just back in the past, but we're back in those crappy movies. Um, yeah. Uh, the water ripples behind Guy. Eh, just the thing I found on YouTube. I didn't know how to make him walk through the portal, so I was kind of into portal come to him in that scene. So yeah, so now we're back in, in Serial 3, basically, because I grabbed the pixelated background from from Serial 3, and I threw it in here. I actually found it on, on Google again, thankfully. And I pixelated, <laughs> I pixelated it as much as I could, so I really stretched it out. But, so it looks like just like it did in Serial 3, which is great. Um, I've never been so excited about a pixelated picture in my life. So yeah, so this scene right here takes place because I didn't know how to save Guy. So I just had the old man and baby come out of a portal and blow him up. Blow up this humanoid sort of box. Uh, yeah. I always figured these two characters are kind of like the comic relief of this series. And especially this movie because there's so much, like, there's so much heavy stuff in this movie. People die, people get blown up. Um, and... I figured to loop, to offset that have these two characters at the end because at the end everything is happy now, right? Because everyone, all the bad, yeah, all the bad guys got blown up, literally. Wow. <laughs> the robot blew up some people, and then this guy blew up some people. So I mean, not not this guy right here, but the old man blew up some people. Wow, there's a lot of blowing up of people in this movie. I never actually realized that until right now. I wonder if that means something. I don't know. I just don't know. It was interesting voicing these characters again after so long, too. Yeah. So, this scene here, with the camera pulling back and the music swelling, I wanted people to think, okay, this is the last shot, everything's happy, everyone's going home at the end. No. Because a guy is actually going underground. Because everything goes underground in my movies. Um... So, yeah, so I, I brought back some danger music, and after everything that's happened in the series, I wanted to bring it back to its roots, and go directly back into the the terror uh, that the guy, the guy feels around the cereal box. Bring that right back. And, uh, like, like actually nothing's actually changed after everything that's happened. And that is, <laughs> that's the end of the movie. That's the end of the series. That is the very last shot of the series. Yes, yeah, so there's an entire movie you have to make, but that's the very last shot of the series. And that's the end of the movie. Also, you'll notice that there's clips of, like, the old man just randomly in the ending credit. I did not put those in. So, and I tried taking them out, and then it came back. <laughs> and then, I don't know. I don't know why those that's in there, but it is. I'm not going to fight with it anymore. So, okay, here's the thing. It took me forever to render this movie out. Let, let, this, let the record show. Because ugh, I had to fight with programs, I had to use third-party programs to, oh my gosh, reduce the files. So I rendered it out, and it was at 97 gigabytes. Gigabytes! So I'm like, oh, great. And <laughs> so I had to use a program to reduce the file size. And then, like, before that, though, I was fighting with the sound because it kept getting uh, out of sync like terribly out of sync and then I would fix all of it and then it would get out of sync again and I didn't know what was going on so I just want you to know how hard it was for me to render this stupid thing out and uh, I hope you liked it though because it, oh my gosh it's a pain in the butt um so yeah this person right here is the person that did the piano music 
she did a great job. And the voice actors also did a great job. Um, it was really fun actually working with, with other people on this one. Uh, Where Is My Mind by Sunder Girl is a great song. Um, I thought it would be very suiting for a serial movie uh, because it's just insanity. And where is my mind is the question of the day. Um, yep. And this last shot right next here is because I don't own everything I used, honestly. Music, backgrounds, whatever else. But this is a non-profit movie, and I don't make any money off of this, so please, please don't sue me. Good night, everyone.